Welcome to The Music Reel. I'm your host, Nicola Burton. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with music researcher Dr. Ben Green, postdoctoral resident adjunct for the Griffith Centre for Social and Cultural Research. How are you, Ben? Well, thanks, Nikki. Thanks so much for having me on today. Well, I'm really keen to hear about what you're doing right now. Um, since March, I've been talking to people around the world, asking them how lockdowns have impacted their music business. Now, you and your team, you're in the middle of a research project. Now, it's called Young People Making Music and Wellbeing During a Public Health Crisis. Exactly. Well, could you introduce that to us? Tell us about how that came about and what's the end result, the actual goal that you're looking to achieve at the end of that research project? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Well, uh, the, the team on this includes myself. I'm a cultural sociologist. Professor Andy Bennett uh, is a cultural sociologist. And there's also uh, Ernesta Sophia, who's from the School of Medicine and Public Health. Um, and so Andy and I have done a lot of work before in music scenes. Um, and one of the things we've sought to focus on is the, the intangible side of music scenes, of what makes them tick and what they bring to a given city or a place. Um, so, for example, there's been a lot of great work in recent years about the contribution that uh, music, live music, and the music industry more generally makes to the economy of given cities or, or nationally. Um, but there's also this other side of things that uh, seems to be coming to the fore for a lot of people at the moment, which is... Uh, the social value and the cultural value and also the, the, the value of well-being, which is what we're focusing on in this project, what people get out of music, what drives them to do it and, uh, and what we can learn from that. And so that's why we've um, connected with uh, Ernesta from Public Health. And so we're looking at well-being in a broad sense to include mental health, physical health and also social connection. Because social connection is something that for the last five months has been so low on all of our spheres and it's, it really has impacted so much on mental health in, in, in the general population, hasn't it, Ben? Yes, exactly. In fact, one of the things that um, the research that we're doing at the moment is interviewing uh, young people who are music makers and that's a full spectrum from, from hobbyists through to professionals and I've spoken to people at all parts of that spectrum. Um, but speaking to them about how they've been affected. But one of the things that's on their minds, and in fact, this is, this is kind of a source of uh, purpose and identity for a lot of music makers at the moment, is this recognition that people need art at the moment, that just the general population is looking to music, among other things, for their own well-being. And so we don't want to forget the, the music makers who are so crucial to that. Um, we want to look at their well-being as well and the strategies that they're using. And now you were involved in the Making Music Work project that was recently released and there was a, a really great uh, article that was published on The Conversation, A Long Way to the Top. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that because there were some vital statistics in that article as well in that project that I think will help people to better understand what musicians are facing right now. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Well, the Making Music Work project was going for a long time before I became involved. So it's led by the, the Queensland Conservatorium Research Centre with a number of partners. Um, and I came in after they had done their research. They surveyed uh, musicians, hundreds of musicians across the country and also undertook in-depth interviews. Um, and I came in at the end, uh, largely in translating that to the, the current COVID situation because their work looked at musicians' careers in Australia and in particular, the way that, as I'm sure your listeners would be familiar, a lot of people have what's called a portfolio career. You're not just doing one thing, you're pulling together a number of things. And so they actually went out to get data on, okay, how do musicians make a living in Australia? And all the different sides of that, what are the strategies that they use and, and what are the risks inherent in those? And one of the things that came out of that research, and this is what's covered in that conversation article, is it kind of shows why musicians were especially exposed to the COVID crisis. Um, and, it, and looking at the kinds of ways that their careers are built and what's important in those will be important in rebuilding as well and looking at how governments, for example, can, can support that. So that's come up in, in my current research, speaking to people about their well-being. I've spoken to 
you know, musicians who have had to cancel international tours, push back album releases, cancel full booking calendars of, of function gigs, for example. Basically, people losing a living um, as well as this source of identity and well-being um, and how that's an, an extra hard hit for a lot of people. It is, and, and it, how we move forward from this point, I think, is going to determine how people recover, not just from the financial, but I guess the, the mindset and the mental health challenges because that will determine everything. So, you've, look, you've had so much exposure to data in this subject. In your opinion, I'm going to put you on the spot here, what is the one thing that as an industry we perhaps should change, should do a little differently in order for us to not just recover from COVID but I guess maybe reimagine and transform our industry so that we don't continue on that same cycle where people are stuck in the gig economy, they can't survive unless they're doing five or six different jobs. What do you think, Ben? What's that one thing just from your data and your observation that you think you could share with us today? Sure. Okay. Well, I guess I'll work from what's our main finding and see where that leads us in terms of what we can do with that. So I guess the overarching finding of our research isn't really surprising to me and probably not surprising to anyone listening to this, which is that one of the reasons or one of the motivations for making music and one of the things that people get out of it is a source of well-being, mental health, physical health, social connection a sense of purpose, a sense of identity, um, looking at health in that very broad sense, not just as a lack of illness, but as a, as a positive thing that you want in your life. Um, and so that's something that I guess we need to remember is both the reason people turn to music, something that drives them and uh, something they get out of it and also something that they give to the, the broader community. And so I guess maybe the the main thing coming out of our research is to um recognize that that's sort of so well known it goes without saying i guess for musicians but when you're trying to um look at um industry-wide change or if you're trying to look at policy um you start getting caught up in figures and quantifiable things and so i guess it's important not to forget um that one of the reasons people go through this um, one of the reasons people invest so much uh, time and money and everything else into being a musician um, is what it gives them in terms of well-being and also their sense of service in giving well-being to others. Now we know that that can get exploited. That that's a you know as uh, the, the the Gillian Welsh song says, we're going to do it anyway, even if it doesn't pay. And so <laughs> some people, some other people might might figure out ways to profit from that. We need to be wary of that. But I guess one way to be on our toes about that is, is to have a good, solid understanding of um, that particular motivation for music making and to, and to support that. So, so I guess in terms of practical, concrete things, one thing I've been uh, really enjoying finding out in my research is the strategies that musicians have come up with uh, for their own well-being. Um, so, for example, in terms of losing something to work towards, everyone talks about you need a motivation, you need a gig or a, a release or whatever it is on the horizon to practice for um, and to give you that sense that you're, that you're doing something. And when that gets lost, that's been really serious for a lot of people. And so that's where musicians have, have come together and figured out ways, whether it be online gigs, whether it be making do with alternative types of performances, or whether it be, um, you know, other types of projects that they can do. And they've all got their own issues. Everyone says a, a live stream is just not the same. Um, but musicians are coming together. There's also this sense, a number of people have commented to me, they think the playing field's been levelled a bit. There's a bit of a sense we're all in this together, which is a really great thing in this industry because it's true. Um, so that's, that's, I guess, the lesson that the people I talk to seem to be taking from this is we're all in this together and we have <clears throat> a power to make things happen. Um, so I guess I would take my lead from them and say, let's, let's support that. I love that, that we have a power and it's all about coming together. And I think the bottom line is what is the value of music 
to the general population. Because could you imagine the soundtrack to your life without music, a wedding without music, going shopping in Woolies without music, going to the gym without music? So I think it's an opportunity for us as an industry to really continue to tell our stories and for people to appreciate, well, look, you know what, life without music, without that live energy exchange at a performance, it's not the same. And it is such an integral part of us coming together socially, isn't it? So let's finally, let's talk about this project. How can someone be involved in it? How can they actually participate in your research project? Sure. Okay. Well, we're, we're looking for people to participate in online interviews, a bit like this, face-to-face -face online interviews, um, uh, which, you know, can generally go for around 40 minutes, may, may go a little longer, um, and I can provide full details when people get in touch. But what I would ask people to do is, is to get in touch directly. Um, so if I can give my email address is b.green, G-R-E-E-N, at Griffith g r i w f i t h dot e d u dot a u. Yep, and I'll put all of that in the post as well, so they'll have all your details. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. Yeah, well, if people can just get in touch, and there's there's a, there's flyers that we're circulating, which you you um, may be able to see as well, um, and then I'll be able to provide full details of the project. It's all done under the sort of ethical um, approvals from the university, as we have to do for all of our research. But the sort of people who we want to speak to. We are focusing on young people. Uh, we're partly youth researchers. We know that that doesn't by any means cover all musicians. I'm, I'm outside the, the age range and I'm a musician myself, so I know that. Um, but we are particularly looking at um, how young people are engaging in music making and what are the, the challenges and the opportunities they're facing in a certain situation and with this focus on well-being. Um, so that includes people who are semi-professional or professional musicians, like I've talked about. It also includes people who are young people who just happen to be musicians. Um, I've had some really interesting conversations with hobbyists or people who have, um, you know, young adults who have picked up the instrument they learnt as a child and that's turned out to be a great coping mechanism during COVID. So that whole spectrum um, we're really interested to hear from. And I guess one of the ways you know, you know, as a researcher, oh, this is an interesting topic, or yes, there is something here, is that people are coming out and they do seem to have a story to tell. Um, and that's the feeling that I'm getting. So we're definitely keen to gather more and more of these stories um, and to, to speak to as many people as possible. So if anyone can get in touch uh, with that email address, it's, it's people from 18 to 35 years of age who are music makers in any sense of the word, um, from hobby through to professional, um, in any style, in any genre, what have you. Um, and we want to speak to people about um, how music making may have been a source of well-being for them during the COVID crisis and what challenges there have been in that regard. Perfect. So anyone who's watching this, make sure you get to the end of the video, check out the post on the website, you'll have all the details there and if you care about the music industry at all I, I do encourage you to contact Ben and his team because the research data that they get from your story is going to help the industry as a whole to make some changes some transformations moving forward Dr Ben Green what a great chat that I've had with you today thank you so much thanks so much Nikki it's been a real pleasure well I'm looking forward to when this is done Perhaps we can have a chat and we can then talk about the findings because I think it's a fascinating and wonderful project. I really want to know what the stories are on the other side of this. So take care and thank you so much today, Ben. Thanks so much.